The Tall Boy Experience. Hi, I'm Ian the Van Zandt. Yo, 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 this is Kid. And this is Play together with Kid and Play. Yo, Widrill. What's up, y'all? This is Case. What up, Tall Boy? It's your man, G Garland. Hey, everybody. I'm with the Tall Boy, and you're with the Tall Boy Experience. Yes. Hey, this is your girl, Shirley Strawberry. Listen, if you want the experience, you're checking out the Tall Boy. The Tall Boy Experience. Experience, baby. We short, but he's tall. You want the Tall Boy, because he's going to bring you the exclusive. Experience the tallness of the boy. Experience the Tall Boy. Yeah, he's way up there. Tall Boy is about to bring it to you. Don't go anywhere. Love you. Hey, Tall Boy. Tall Boy. Tall Boy. It's the Tall Boy Experience, man. We are live, man. This is one of my homies, a uh, good friend of mine. We've been going back for about five, seven years uh, now. I'd say about seven and a half years. Yeah, about that long. Uh, we got about like 10, 20,000 views on our first interview, but this is Mr. Uh, Mom's Apple Pie. Mr. Sir Charles Jones, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good, bro. It's good to see you. Always good to see you, man. Uh, well, see that upgraded, got the crew all around, everybody camera out and mic'd up. Hey, man, man, that's God just working his blessings. That's all this. Spending some money, ain't you? <laughs> hey, it's all good, man. Uh, how's things been with you, man? Everything's been blessed, man, and good as usual, man. Still traveling around the world. Doing my thing, just built another new studio, and bro, I'm off. I'm off in the restaurant business now. Really? What, what, what you serving over there? Oh, soul man. food? We got it all. Soul food, and we got uh, famous po' boy sandwiches. We got a hickory smoked chicken salad recipe. All for to get ready to come, man, in the next six months. Okay, so where is this place located? Right now, we can finish doing them in concession traders. We're gonna put one in Atlanta, one in Memphis, one in Little Rock, and. I'm kind of undecided why I want to put the last one, you know what I'm saying? Maybe well, Birmingham, where I'm from. I'm about to say Louisiana. Then you can do a cage. Well, we can do it all cage, you know what I'm saying? We, you going po' boys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there you go. Um, talk to me. What was that one defining moment for you that said that this is what you want to do in, uh, as far as a career? I say as far as my career, man, uh, we was in Greenwood, Mississippi one night. And, you know, my first record uh, had got mediocre hot and next thing you know we were sitting in front of about 10,000 people man up there with uh, WGNL Osario Hughes and his family and I'm looking listening at 10,000 women singing the lyrics to the song so I kind of knew my destiny was set up that I was to get ready to be famous man and it just blew up from there it took off now you know you are a young artist in regards to the blues is concerned um, how do you get that fan base for yourself uh, when they don't even play this, the music on the radio well, you know, we've been limited down to radio a lot, man, from weekend play to something, most none at all now, you know what I'm saying, a lot of hip-hop that took off things. So, you know, basically, when you're traveling the road doing concerts, you know, you build your fan base at the concerts and you stay loyal to the fans. And they kind of like word of mouth and everything is what gets us the recognition that we have, really. Um, so, are you signed to a label or are you independent? Uh, independent now, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm done with the signing to the labels and managements and stuff. You know what I'm saying? I paid a lot of dues and learned, you know, how to operate and do things in the business myself. So, for a young artist that's coming up or that's a fan of the blues um, that's trying to do their thing, what advice would you give to them? Learn about mechanical royalties first, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you know, you do your YouTubes and get your books on learning and studying and publishing and mechanical royalties and learn what that's all about first and learn paperwork, you know, basic copyrights and stuff, you know what I'm saying, and how to fill out your paperwork first, then you'll know what you're supposed to do with your music. Gotcha. So, um, what, are you, what is it? You, you're on the road a lot. So, with you being on the road, uh, what do you like to do in your spare time? Cook. <laughs> All I do is cook now, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like a passion and a joy, man, to, to cook when I'm when I'm not singing, man. It's just, it just the, the smile you see on people's face to know when you they tasted some of your food and it was just delicious. And now you cooking for yourself? You cooking for your mama? Because I know how you feel about your mama. Or oh, are you uh, oh, are you cooking for a special lady? Because you know the ladies gonna want to know this question right here. I know that, but we, we right now ain't cooking for a special lady right now. You know what I'm saying? Right now we've been doing you know a couple of the, uh, concession trailers. We've been taking them around, doing a lot of charity work, and feeding the homeless. Mm. And uh, we've been getting so much positive feedback from. From the people or how good the food tastes and they be like so try you really should invest off in the franchise and not in the restaurant business 
Uh, you're one of the younger guys that's coming up. Uh, unfortunately, we just lost Mel Waiters, and I know you've been on his uh, a couple of his shows, and uh, unfortunately, we lost BB uh, King as well. Uh, your thoughts? Right, well, Mel, you know, if it wasn't a couple of shows, you know, both of us came up together in the same trend, you know, and we toured together, i say going on 12 to 15 years, and uh, we just buried him uh, two weeks ago. Oh, you went down to San Antonio? Yeah, yeah we, everybody went to support him, you know what I'm saying? It, that was my best friend in this whole entire business, mm -hmm. is it was Mel Waiters. So, I mean, you got to give us a Mel Waiters story. I mean, because I talked to him, and I got the last living interview with him, and he was telling me some hole-in-the-wall stories. Give me a male waiter story. I give you a lot of male waiter stories, man. You know what I'm saying? The biggest thing with me and male waiters is we was the equipment junkies out here. It's kind of like how you is, you know what I'm saying? We spent all, all our money on studio equipment and engineering and stuff like that. And we probably talked at least four days out of the week, you know, about new equipment this, new equipment that. Or either I'm up in San Antonio or he up in Atlanta. You know, when we get a lot of new equipment, you know what I'm saying? I, if I learn how to do it first, I teach him. If he learn how to do it first, he teach me. So that would be the biggest, fondest memories, man, just of. Just, I'm just going to miss being in the studio with him, man. He knows how the late night talks. And one of the most grandest moments to me is, like, we used to always talk to each other. Like, if, if he home and I'm on the road, or vice versa, if, if I'm on the road and it's late at night or something, you know what I'm saying, he would call me. And talk to me until I got home and if, if he was on the road I'm at home he'll do the same you know what I'm saying and we took care of each other like that you know what I'm saying to keep each other work we always talked about equipment so if I could be dead sleepy man and we driving or something man we might got 400 more miles to go and dead sleep he'll bring up something about the equipment I'll wake right up man and I'm like wow you just got that man the new control 24 this and that such such and that was going to be the, the grandest moments, man. Wow, that's big right there. That's true friendship, true bond. True, uh, uh, a bond that, you know, that, that's, that, that you won't be able to get, you know. Right, yeah. I don't think I never have a friend like Mel Waiters, man. It is sucks. B.B. King, do you have any relationship with him? Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I got the B.B. King Award when uh, I first came out. And uh, Mr. Charles Evers, uh, Mega Evers' brother out of WMPR 90.1 in Jackson, Mississippi, flew him in to give me the award and he looked at me really yeah he said it's your time now youngster he said you're on your way man and that was a grand feeling it was kind of weird feeling you like you like wow this is bb king and they're telling me this and they flew him in just for little old me you know what i'm saying and everything just blew up there i always got his blessings man and he had a wonderful family too so knowing that you know you are the new um the, the, I don't want to take anything away from the pioneers. Um, um, say, uh, 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 God, I can't think of my. my uh, just the new sensation. Yeah, yeah the new sensation. With you being the new sensation, how does that feel? Knowing that you know you're you're the new face of the blues. Tell you the truth, you know, what I'm saying everybody be sitting there thinking, bro, it's, it's like it's gonna be a great feeling. It's actually a weight on your shoulders that you better be getting ready to uh, to fill a hell of a void. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's not fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, like even tonight, Mel was supposed to close and headline this show. Now all of the pressure is on me. So there's 10,000 people out there right now waiting on me and everybody, all of the promoters and all of the people we want to see, can he actually handle it like a pioneer? So that's why I'm in the dressing room hiding from everybody. It's, it's, a, it's a nervous feeling, tall boy. Well, I feel good and I feel honored that you've given me this time since you're saying that, you know, you got all this pressure and all this weight. So ho hopefully, you know, we can Get a nice little alcoholic uh, adult yeah, beverage. Yeah, nice adult, uh, beverage. adult beverage and uh, get you a little loose and have a little good time. And, uh, you know, congratulations on, you know, well, you know, just the things that you've been doing. And like I said, you've been able to build that fan base. And uh, by you doing that, that's that's an honor and a feat in itself. Right. Three million strong right now, man. And we've been actually uh, crossing over, man, and we've been mingling around with some of the hip hop artists, man. Me and Mystical just got out of the studio last week. See, okay, we gotta talk. And he's a great, talented brother, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, I've been around blues all my life, but when I went in there and collaborated with this this this, this brother in the studio, 
his mind is so quick and he is so mm -hmm. extremely talented, man, that he could merit what he was doing and make it combine with the blues by how he was writing and just coming up with stuff. So much love. And then uh, my boy, they, 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 they here tonight celebrate my main man Ludacris birthday party tonight. Happy birthday, baby boy. Uh -oh. um, so let me ask you this and I'm going to get you on out of here because I know we, we got to get ready for the turn up. Is there anybody that you would like to work with, whether it's in the hip hop field, maybe in the gospel field? Because, you know, like you said, Mel Waiters was big in the gospel. And then now you're saying you're working with mystical or any genre. Is there anybody? Or could there even be a collaboration with you and a uh, um, Clarence Carter or a, a Bobby Rush? Right. Well, we, is, is there any Bobby used to each other? You know what I'm saying? We we could we we could go and cut with each other at any time. Like say as far as hip hop, I would love to work with DJ Quick. That's my hero right there in the bit. He's one of the strongest producers, man. No disrespect to Dre and them and all that. But they sleeping on my main man, Quick, man. He, he he's an elite in the top five, and maybe number one to me. Okay. And then. And, and, Gospel, gospel. I say I like to work with the Canton Spirituals. I love them brothers there, and uh, they they very talented guys too. So uh, DJ Quick and the Canton Spirituals. If you see this video, uh, you know where to find it. I'll hook y'all brother up. He needs y'all, man. Come on, Dwayne M. Harvey. <laughs> hey, it's a tall boy experience, man. We hanging out live with this brother right here, Mr. Sir Charles Jones. Thank you so much for your time, my brother, and I look forward to seeing you again. Anytime, my brother. Anytime, tall boy. That's what's up. Did you like the video? That's right. Did you like the video? Hit that like button. Hit the share button. Share it. Think big. Think tall. Think tall boy.